Now, meanwhile, the suspect, 21-year-old Carlos Dominguez, was in court today where he pleaded not guilty to two counts of murder and one count of attempted murder. Becca Habegger was in the courtroom and she joins us now live. Becca, was the suspect's family there today? You know, Chris and Laura, we think so, but let me tell you what we know. Dominguez's defense, defense attorney huddled with a group of people after the hearing. It's not uncommon for a defense attorney to meet with the defendant's family after such a hearing. We also recognized at least one of the people in the group from photos of Dominguez's family that we have found on social media in recent days. But when we approached the group to ask about Dominguez, this is what they had to say. No conocemos a Carlos, no sé por qué están preguntándonos de él. We don't know Carlos. I don't know why you are asking about him, he says. Another man adds, to just say no, something we, else. we tried talking with the people who had conferenced after the hearing with the public defender representing Carlos Reales Dominguez, seeking any information we can get on this young man accused of murdering two people and attempting to murder a third. In a hearing that started at 1.30 and lasted less than 12 minutes, Dominguez appeared handcuffed and sullen. He kept his gaze downward, speaking only when the judge asked him a direct question. Mr. Dominguez? Yeah. Is that your true name? Yeah. Judge Daniel Woke read the charges. Two counts of murder with enhancements for willful, deliberate, and premeditated murder and using a deadly weapon, and one count of attempted murder with enhancements for premeditation, using a deadly weapon, and inflicting great bodily harm. The prosecutor also added case enhancements for multiple murders, the violence of the alleged crimes, and the suspect's danger to society. Your Honor, I would acknowledge receipt of the complaint. Uh, enter not guilty, please, to all counts and denials to all enhancements. As for the question of bail, it was originally set at $4 million, but the prosecutor asked the judge to make Dominguez ineligible for bail, so he would have to stay in custody for now. It took two lives and it almost cost a third person their life. Given that the danger that the defendant represents to the public, I would ask that no bail be set. The judge ultimately sided with the prosecutor. And Dominguez is next due in court on May 22nd at 9 a.m. right here at Yolo Superior Court. And Becca, there's still just so many questions about this case motive, for example. What did the attorney say today? Yeah, that's a great question, Chris. Laura, I wish I knew. I asked both the defense attorney and the prosecutor to comment on the case after the hearing. Both declined. Our Becca Habegger live for us tonight. Becca, we thank you. Now, keep in mind, the suspect is now on a detainer by U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE. Yeah, and this means ICE would take him into custody if he was released from jail in Yolo County. According to an ICE official, Dominguez is from El Salvador. He entered the United States in April 2009 near Galveston, Texas, as an unaccompanied minor. He was transferred to a family member, and his case was closed in April 2012. Neighbors of the suspect are still in shock after the FBI and Davis police blocked their neighborhood for eight hours yesterday, searching the home. Our Devin Truby was there for the entire search yesterday and talked with neighbors. Devin, tell us what you're learning today. Well, Laura, as far as we can tell, there are people still in the house. Take a look earlier when we were here today. That porch light was on. It's now turned off. There was also several pieces of mail stuck in the front door. Those have now been picked up and are no longer there. So we are assuming there are some people going in and out of this house. We spoke with neighbors earlier today that say about four to five guys live there with Carlos Dominguez and that they were very friendly. They have a gym in their garage and they would even play guitar on the front porch. I've just never seen something like that before, um, especially the hazmat suits. More than 24 hours after crime scene investigators swarmed the home of Davis suspect Carlos Dominguez, neighbors are still in shock. Jillian Curran lives next door. Although she says she never met Dominguez, her interactions with his roommates were always pleasant. His housemates are all really nice, though. They're all really, really nice. They offered to, like, park their car in our driveway when we weren't here, so... It was kind of shocking that he lived with them, of all people. Melina Dimmick lives across the street, telling ABC 10 she was surprised how quickly things escalated. There was no one here except for like a little stakeout going on with like one van. And then I came back and it was police tape and so many cars and people in hazmat suits. She says she had friends over on Saturday night when the second attack was happening less than half a mile from her home. And it's the kind of thing where you're like, you don't think it can happen to you. And then it 
so close in proximity that like it could have. Even though investigators have Dominguez as the suspect and he's behind bars, many tell us the safety bubble that the Davis community has been living in has burst. It's a lot to take in because it was so close and I mean, he was a student as well. I would always go shopping at night, so I'm probably not going to do that anymore <laughs> um, and probably no more walking to class, to be honest. And I've always carried around pepper spray, but like now more than ever, I'm like, I know how to use it and I'm like ready if I need to. I spoke to the family of the second victim today, Kareem Najim, asking if he may have known Carlos Dominguez because they were both students at UC Davis, and the family said they were not. Now, Devin, did anyone that you spoke with there, did they have any more insight if Carlos might have known Kareem? Many neighbors tell us here that while they saw the roommates multiple times and would even wave and have exchanges, they never saw Carlos and they would even be hard pressed if you showed a picture of him to say that he lived here. All right, Devin Truby live in Davis for us tonight. Thank you for that update.